where was I? Holy shit. It was so painful and dark in there. I could feel all of my organs touching. Oh, but we had 100k subs when I was in there. Well, the suffering was well worth it then, thank you. When you think of the most hated comedians, I think a few standouts instantly come to mind. Brendan Schaub for unfunny race humor, Amy Schumer for unfunny sex humor, Bill Cosby for other not funny things, you get the point. But never in my days have I seen a comedian so universally hated by an app. Angela Johnson is a stand-up comedian on TikTok with 2.6 million followers, though I'd wager a large portion of those are only there to hate follow because not a lot of people find her funny. One of my good friends, she's Filipino, right? And uh, one day her grandma was driving and all of a sudden she hit a dog. <laughs> I know, it was really sad. But her response to that was, Oy, sorry, dog. <laughs> Oy, sorry, dog. Her TikToks are mostly just clips taken from her stand-up routine, and she gets lots of comments like, Seriously, what part of this was funny? Still waiting for the punchline? Look at that stage presence. As soon as you add some comedy to your act, you will really be doing it. Hell, even the top autofill result when you search her name on TikTok is Angela Johnson, not funny. Which is sad when the name of her Netflix stand-up special is called Not Fancy, and that doesn't pop up at all. But before we jump into this mess, a quick word from our lovely sponsor, Atlas VPN. In Greek mythology, Atlas was a primordial god titan tasked with the responsibility of holding the heavens upon his shoulders for all of eternity. But more importantly today, it's the name of a really cool VPN company. Atlas VPN makes it so all your internet traffic travels through an encrypted tunnel, protecting you from spying, ads and malware, and even hides your IP address when surfing the web. Cowabunga! Right now, Atlas VPN is running a gargantuan discount. You can get a three-year subscription for just $1.83 a month with three months free with a 30-day money-back guarantee using my link in the description below. <laughs> What, are we just giving VPNs away? With Atlas VPN, you get to watch shows on streaming platforms that were previously locked out of your region. For instance, if you don't live in the state of New York, Netflix blocks you from watching one of my favorite shows, Arrested Development. But with one click, I change my IP address and suddenly I fork in Andrew Cuomo and Derek Jeter's a national treasure. Atlas VPN is easily the most affordable VPN deal in the market right now with the same blazing fast speeds and high level security you'd expect from paying for other VPNs. Not to mention just one subscription protects unlimited devices. Once again, you can get Atlas VPN with a three year subscription for only $1.83 a month with three months free with a 30 day money back guarantee using my link in the description below. I'm walking here. <laughs> Thanks Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Okay, enough beating around the bush. That's what Louis CK does for fun. Let's watch her TikToks because there are some people that find her funny, almost too funny. And that's the live audiences she performs in front of. I'm a Christian and I'm a comedian, but I'm not a Christian comedian. <laughs> Let me explain. I don't have jokes that are like, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John walk into a bar. <laughs> Sinners. <laughs> but like, I just do me. You know what I mean? Like, I can't be anybody else but me. Right? Like, I'll tell you the truth. I love Jesus, okay? Yes, I do. But I will punch a hoe. Where were the jokes? Did I just miss them? Was I not listening I hard enough? The crowd seemed to have heard them, so I know they're there somewhere. Uh, let me explain. Cue laughter. <laughs> huh? Is it because she pronounced it differently? Is that it? Sure, maybe it showed some of her quirky personality, but it wasn't really a joke. At least not one that should get a crowd more wild than a Travis Scott concert. You see, that's a joke. An insensitive one for sure, but it was a joke. What else you got for us, Angela? They had hundreds of movies for us to choose from, right? We're going to Europe, so I wanted to be prepared for all I was about to experience there, so I decided to watch the movie Taken. <laughs> it's a good movie. At one point, I leaned over to my husband, I was like, uh, babe, don't get taken. Because I ain't going to be able to find you. <laughs> Seriously, this guy is so smart. Liam Neeson, he's like the smartest guy in the world. You guys, if you ever hear about me getting kidnapped, don't call the police. Call Liam Neeson, please. I can't understand this crowd. They laugh at any pause that she gives them. And why were they cheering? She said, Liam Neeson, he's like the smartest guy in the world. And they just lose their fucking marbles in agreement. Liam Neeson, he's like the smartest guy in the world. San Francisco, thanks for having me. I'm gonna get right into it. Liam Neeson. What can't that guy do? 
I mean, who is this guy, Liam Neeson? It's either a laugh track or a paid crowd. Agreed, I immediately thought. I mean, how does anybody actually find this funny? It seemed more like basic storytelling from an overconfident substitute teacher. Did that reference even make sense? I don't know. What I do know is that humor is subjective, but typically I can understand why someone might find something funny that I don't. For example, and I'm about to piss off a lot of you right now, I don't find Jim Carrey that funny. Wait, what? Kill him, end his life. Hold on, don't click off the video just yet, dad, and people that still laugh at Snapchat filters. I might smile here and there, but he's not really for me, though I can understand why people find him funny, even though I do not. Back to Angela Johnson, who the fuck finds this person funny? <laughs> so funny, in fact, that they're belly laughing at her inane references to Liam Neeson. This guy is solving crimes from across the world on the phone, <laughs> on a flip phone. He don't got a data plan, nothing. He's gonna figure it out. Talking about, is the wind blowing to the east? Well, definitely no one on TikTok is in that audience because outside of all the comments, there's also a ton of duets taking a stand against Angela and all women. Shit, okay, they're saying all women aren't funny, great. Let me explain. Are you serious, my brother? Come on, guys. Did we have to take it that far? I guess it had to come up at some point. The are women funny question. Yes, obviously. Go outside and meet people, you Neanderthals. Look, the last thing I want this video to come off as is just a guy shitting on women in comedy. Though that's all I've done so far. I've grown up my whole life admiring female comics from the likes of Tina Fey or Amy Poehler. And more recently, if Taylor Tomlinson isn't on your radar, you're missing out. Not to mention, if we're talking new age media, I think Jane Wickline might be the funniest person on all of TikTok. So it sucks when you have comics like Amy Schumer Schumer, now Angela Johnson, poison a bunch of Tate Stan's minds to reinforce, yeah, women, comedy ain't for you. We saw two people not be very good at it, and we think you should all quit now. Us, of course, being dudes that will never pursue a career in comedy and are devoid of humor past, wanna hear a joke? The WNBA. <laughs> Classic. Maybe you women should just stay in your lane. If you could drive, <laughs> boom, roasted. Don't get it twisted, that's not old Gunner taking the moral high ground. We will be making fun of Angela again. Because sexism aside, I really couldn't wrap my brain around who was buying tickets for these shows. So I did some research, and I think there's more going on here than just the possible fake laugh track theory. You see, Angela Johnson has actually been around for a while, catching a breakthrough YouTube in 2008 when a bit from her stand-up routine went old school viral. Angela Johnson nail salon uncut stand-up comedy with almost 34 million views. Does the routine hold up? Let's find out, because there's nothing funnier than a guy criticizing a female comedian from over a decade ago. No, but uh, I like to hang out with my family a lot, hang out with my sister. We go get our nails done. These ladies, they're so nice. You know, they make you feel like it's all about you and customer service, you know. Whatever you lie, we do for you. <laughs> As soon as I walk in, they greet me right away. Hi, honey, what you need today? <laughs> oh, um, can I get my nails done? Okay, honey, do you lie pedicure too? Uh, no, no, just my nails. Honey, why you don't lie? Okay, that, this, that was, that was the routine. It goes on for three minutes of her having a conversation with a nail salon employee and her doing a Vietnamese accent for the employee despite her being not Vietnamese. She's Mexican American. And you know what? Who cares? If you can do a good accent for a bit, I'm all for it. But the bit is just the accent. It's okay, honey. Only four dollar more. That's okay. <laughs> do you like crypto jail? What? Do you like crypto jail? <laughs> um. Uh, I'm sorry. Um. What? <laughs> Honey, do you like crypto jail for your nail? It's the best thing you can have for your nail. Make it look nice. It sparkle like diamond in the sky. Do you like crypto jail? <laughs> You see, the joke here is that the employee is pronouncing crystal gel wrong because, because she's Asian. <laughs> I'm not the PC police and I don't care for offensiveness in comedy if it's done well, but this just feels incredibly lazy. What's the purpose of the character? Does she have another trait to pick at or does she just talk funny? Maybe at least try to make it humorous in some other way in spite of her dialect. Because with routines like this, what you have to ask yourself is, could this still be funny if she wasn't doing an accent? No? Okay, then the accent was the joke and if you found that funny, you're either a child, have some unchecked biases, or you're 
Greek guide acts on a Sunday stroll. <laughs> Now again, this is 2008, and it's really not even that bad compared to other comics at the time, but it's what gave her her big start. It related with a ton of people because the nail salon industry in the U.S. is estimated to be comprised of some 40% Vietnamese women dating back to the Vietnam War when they immigrated here as refugees looking for work. I'm not gonna pretend I knew that before this video. We get to learn together on the Gunner TV channel. But the point is, people thought it was funny because they've also gotten their nails done by a Vietnamese person before, and haha, they do sound different than us. And that's really all it took in 2008 to go viral. <laughs> and Angela realized this because her next big viral moment would be doing the same thing except this time with an accent similar to Ebonics with a racially ambiguous character named Bon Kui Kui in a mad TV sketch in 2011. I changed my mind about the cheese. Oh, now you want some cheese? Yes. Now you want some cheese? You see me putting the order why you didn't say nothing in the first place? I tried to, but... Oh, no, sir, don't get loud with me, sir. Do not get loud with me. Oh, no. Sir Cowardy! Sir Cowardy, this dude needs to go. He needs to go. Looking good, Bobby Lee. Again, nothing crazy out of the ordinary for the time, and this sketch had some decent jokes, but the main takeaway is this Bon Kui Kui character says stuff funny. Security, this dude needs to go. LMFAO. I think somewhere deep in the back of my brain, I kind of remember this sketch as a kid, because she also had the famous line, I will cut you. Sir, she was trying to fight me, sir. No, I wasn't. Well, I will cut you. Which I think I remember kids saying in school a lot. I even found this kid's talent show rendition of the sketch from years back. So it definitely had a lot of reach at the time. Do not get low with me, sir. Do not get low with me. Oh no. Sakari, Sakari. He needs to go. And with this influence, Angela went on to squeeze everything she could out of this character for the rest of her career, doing more sketches and even making songs, releasing a full album as Bon Kui Kui. This one for all my sins. Oh, yep, she said the line. She said the I'ma cut you line. This was totally worth the money to produce this. Oh look, here's a song where it's Bon Kui Kui featuring Tammy, Angela's Vietnamese nail salon employee impersonation from earlier. You know I'm I can't believe that shit's real. But these are Angela Johnson's entire career makers. Two characters who are lazy stereotypical versions of other ethnicities, very fun. And again, it was a different time, more tonally unaware, and I'm sure she's moved past it. Oh, no, she's still posting clips of Bon Kui Kui on TikTok as if it still holds up, never mind. Come, they told me, pum, 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 pum. <laughs> I play my drum for him, pa -ra -pa -pa -pa. Big yikes for me on that one. And to be clear, I'm not calling her racist. I don't think she is. It's just her comedy hasn't evolved at all. Which might be worse. No, it's not. <laughs> because now it's starting to make sense who these psychos are that buy tickets to her stand-up. They're old people that find her funny through nostalgia, which she knows and even tries to reference in her act. Which is why you get TikToks like this where the crowd erupts, but anybody not familiar with her has no idea why people are laughing. I don't wanna fight you. But if you are right here, like if our eyelashes <laughs> is braided together, I will cut you. Standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> she said it again. She said the Bon Kui Kui line from 10 years ago and the Facebook moms in the crowd just love it. But if you're anyone else on TikTok scrolling by, I get why you think it's just an over-the-top laugh track thrown on top of it. Why are they cheering like she just told the best joke ever? Uh, because she did. It's a self-referential inside joke you'd only get if you were a mega fan over 35 who saw the Mad TV sketch from 2011 starring Bon Kui Kui. That's on you. And hey, if she can still go across the country selling out shows off of this nostalgia alone, more power to her. I just think posting those clips to TikTok to a demographic of people younger than 20 might be asking for the bullying because outside of your lifetime fans laughs, your stand-up's not that funny. We just got married last summer. We had just moved in together. So we're still like figuring each other out. For instance, like my toothbrush, right? I like 
to be the only one that uses my toothbrush. But like, he comes to me the other day, he's like, hey babe, can I use your toothbrush real quick? I said, what? He's like, what? It's just like kissing, we kiss at the same thing. Mm, I do not scrape off your tartar with my tongue. She got a round of applause for that one. That's a story maybe worth telling to friends at a bar if they have literally nothing else to talk about. And even then I'd waver. Ugh, sharing toothbrushes is gross and icky, right? Tickets to my next show are starting at $100. Debbie Long 2258, you are very funny. Yep, checks out. I can relate. I'm sure you can, Monica. But hey, if they weren't watching Angela, they'd probably be off sharing more Minion memes, so I guess that's a net positive. The question I have after all this is, how has she not gotten better? I'm not someone that likes to pass judgment on people new to comedy, dipping their toes in the water. There's no sport in making fun of somebody simply for trying. But when you're Angela Johnson and you've been doing this for over 15 years, I gotta ask, are you trying? Did you even know this many people didn't like your stand-up until posting these TikToks? Something interesting about the stand-up comedy industry is that up until recently, comics generally had a much easier time when it came to performing. You made one polished routine and you go on tour telling the same jokes for decades. You weren't posting clips online, so there was no expectation that your act would be any different from what people have already seen from you. This isn't an original idea, by the way. Here's Andrew Schultz giving this take on an interview with Colin and Samir. Yes, yeah. so it's, it's more definitely improv. beneficial for people who like can create quickly, create on the fly, are witty, and also are, you know can grind. And the guys that used to be doing the same set for two decades, and there are these guys, they just can't exist in this environment anymore. They just, it just, yeah. And I think this perfectly sums up some older comedians like Angela Johnson, who at end repeat the same boring jokes show after show. I don't necessarily blame her either. If it works for her and she's making money, I get why she wouldn't change it. Just don't act surprised when you leave your bubble and post it online that people think you're outdated and unfunny. From an interview in 2017, they asked Angela, you're known as much as Bon Cui Cui as you are Angela. I can imagine that can get frustrating after a while. Have you considered retiring her? Angela said, I have tried to retire Bon Cui Cui for like 10 years, but I've come to the conclusion that fans really do love her and want to hear from her and I do what I do for them. Don't get me wrong, I do it for myself as well. I do it because I have dreams and I have goals. When it comes down to it, the ones who are paying their hard-earned money to see me perform, I take into consideration what they want to hear. I've realized that I can never not do the nail salon joke and I will have to talk about Bon Cui Cui for eternity. Well, I'm telling you right now, Angela, you really don't. I hope that you can retire these characters forever and can instead focus on improving your routine without them. They're not needed. You got the confidence, now go do the comedy. I'm Wishing the best for you, Angela, because at least you're not that joke-stealing piece of shit, Amy Schumer. Anyways, that's the video today, my Liam Neesons. Let me know in the comments what was more offensive, Angela Johnson's accents, or me, a white guy, criticizing them. <laughs> also, if you like videos like this one, talking about bad comedians, go check out Nick Is Not Green's video, breaking down Brendan Schaub's stand-up, or go check out Gabby Bell's breakdown on bad female comedians, which I think she has good takes on. Don't forget to follow me at Gunner Klein on Instagram, check out my Patreon to support me directly, join the Discord to stay in the loop, and also get Atlas VPN if you're not racist. I guess you kinda gotta do it now. But with all that said, good day. Uh, security? Yeah, <laughs> get this fucker off my video. Don't move too slow. Fine line between